Hello everyone, today we're talking about everything you need to know about orgs in Fortnite. And the reason I'm making this video is because there are no videos on what to do when a Fortnite org reaches out to you or if you want to reach out to an org. So the day one of you guys watching are good enough to get signed or a big enough content creator to get signed, you'll have a video to watch on some general guidelines to follow. So the first question we need to answer is why does an org want to sign you? What value can you bring to an org as a player or content creator and what benefits do you get for being signed to a professional esports organization? What's extremely important to understand when it comes to getting signed is that it is a mutual agreement that should benefit both parties. So the value you bring to an org is the exposure you bring to the org's sponsors, your ability to sell org merchandise, and a microscopic amount of tournament winnings if you are a Fortnite competitive player. Orgs usually take a small cut of anywhere from 5 to 20% of tournament winnings if you are signed on a reasonable salary. Every org that is semi-serious in Fortnite does however know that the money to be made is very limited from player tournament winnings, but rather focus on making profits from sponsorships and merchandise sales. The unfortunate truth is that no orgs in Fortnite tap into the extreme opportunity for merchandise sales. If I was an org owner and had players competing in, say, the Copenhagen LAN at the end of this year, I'd make a limited edition jersey for that LAN. I'd make a limited edition jersey for AFNCS Grand Finals, or if one of the players on the team got a great placement in a big tournament. There are endless opportunities for orgs to make money and capitalize off the players on the roster. But as of right now, very few orgs fully tap in to the potential. Truth to be told, Fortnite is known for being notoriously bad at helping orgs out when it comes to making a profit, or even allowing them basic exposure such as having sponsors on their jerseys when competing in big tournaments. Essentially meaning that when an org goes to a potential sponsor, selling a deal is incredibly difficult, because the brand isn't going to be promoted where all of the viewers are, on the big stage competing in the massive LAN tournaments. Therefore, getting signed as a competitive player has become harder and harder over the past years as orgs understood that being profitable having top tier players on high salaries isn't a good way to run a profitable esports organization. The reason I'm saying this is just to get you guys to understand that if you want to be hyper successful in Fortnite, you absolutely need to do content as well. In other games, just being a player is sustainable, but because of the limited org support in Fortnite, if orgs want to see good results from their signings, they need their players to do content as well and promote the team they're signed to in other ways than just just placing on the leaderboards. So let's now say that you're a decent player with a good community built around you because you stream and make YouTube videos and an org comes knocking on the door or rather sends you an email asking you if you want to join and if you guys can hop on a discord call. What are some general rules you must follow when this mail slides in your inbox and you get to talk to your potential org for the first time? When hopping on a call with an organization, it is extremely important to ask what their expectations are from you as a player and content creator, and also what their ambitions are within Fortnite. If you and the org's ambitions align, then that is the best possible scenario. When the org asks what you can offer them, it's very important to not overestimate the time you're able to spend streaming, how many videos you're able to make, etc. Be kind to your future self, and be honest to the person you're talking to on Discord. The reason at this point is remarkably important is because of the simple fact that I know a lot of people want to impress the org and say that they can stream way more hours every month than they're currently doing and that they can post way more videos every month than they currently do. This is a terrible way to discuss a deal with an org and you should rather undershoot the amount of stream hours you can potentially do and the amount of YouTube videos you can promise because this is way more sustainable over the long term. And naturally, there is nothing stopping you from doing more stream hours and posting more videos. You'll also positively surprise the org you're signing to if you can do that in the first few months after getting signed. So do not overestimate your working capability. Be incredibly realistic when you're talking with a potential org and rather overwork after 
you're signed. So let's say you've had a chat with the org reaching out. You've been super realistic with them, talking about realistic goals in terms of stream hours, monthly YouTube videos, placements, whatever it may be. And they are ready to offer you a contract to represent the organization. This is where you need to be on guard. Now, most organizations don't want to scam you. They want to make you feel comfortable and at home with the org. However, some orgs directly exploit talent. Therefore, when you get your contract, you need to have someone with experience look over the terms. If the org says that you can't share the contract with anyone, or if they want you to sign it in a day, put on your kicks and run far away. These are the biggest red flags in an organization, and there has been countless stories of talent getting tricked by these strategies time and time again. So be on the lookout for those red flags. What I can also strongly recommend is reading over the contract, and if there's anything you're unsure about, you write up on a piece of paper what you're unsure about and you ask the org, hey, I'm a little confused on a few things in the contract. Is it cool if we hop on a call and discuss some of the contents in the contract? If the org is open to this request, then that is a massive green flag. And you'll also be able to read how the person responding to your questions is answering. If it feels genuine and comfortable, then that's fantastic. But if it feels like he's hiding something or it feels uncomfortable, then you should probably trust your instincts and not take that deal. There are a few contracts that you all need to just fully stay away from. And those are contracts, especially where there is no salary. A lot of low tier orgs come with offers to new players who recently have popped off or new streamers or youtubers asking them to join and sign a contract for no pay but you get free editors free thumbnail designers and a fortnite coach as a general rule never ever sign your name on something if you're not getting paid your signature is worth a lot especially if you're someone who has seen recent success. You also need to be highly critical of new orgs offering you a salary that is too good to be true. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. I would highly recommend getting a manager who has previous experience when it comes to negotiating with orgs. Because being a player or content creator who hasn't done org negotiations before can often lead to objectively bad deals. Knowing what you're worth to an org is no easy task. The only negative aspect of getting a manager is knowing whether or not they're actually good. Unfortunately, in the Fortnite space, there are many managers who have no expertise at all and no knowledge of what terms will be beneficial to both parties. So make sure you get someone with previous experience with players and content creators. I'm not saying you can't do the negotiations on your own, but I just wouldn't recommend it if you're totally new to high-level play and high-level content creation. When you finally find the org you want to sign to and you come to an agreement that both parties is happy with, you need to make sure to respect the team you've joined and make them happy to have you on the team. Of course, expecting them to treat you with the same level of respect. Joining an org is an amazing feeling. It gives you some financial stability to pursue your dreams, and you're working closely with other people whose passion is for the game and the grind. There is truly nothing like it. So I wish you all the best of luck in your journeys, and remember, you get back what you put in.